The best source of income within Europa Universalis 4 is trade income and as such today I'm going to be explaining in detail how trade works. We'll start it off with the trade node overview, move it on to trade power and trade value, trade companies and merchants, trade strategies and how you can get filthy rich in the process, when to collect or transfer and the best trading nations as it stands with the very last patch for Europa Universalis 4. If we also get 6,000 likes on this video I will be doing a brand new states video covering everything you need to know about them and make sure to subscribe for the glory of the roman empire there are two types of trade nodes in u4 there is the end trade nodes or as i like to call them the chanticus nodes and the non-end trade nodes or the virginicum which is the official term trust me there's only three end trade nodes the one in venice the one in genoa and the one in the english channel every other node aside from these three is a non-end trade node what does that actually mean how However, well, end trade nodes are nodes in which you get trade filtered from other nodes and there is no outgoing flow of trade, meaning whatever is produced within the English channel stays within the English channel, plus you also have a trade coming in from other nodes. So if we hover over the English channel node, we see that we have locally a 9.51 trade value, which represents all the trade goods within this particular node. That means all the trade goods goods in provinces that are a part of this node highlighted with yellow on the map right now and we also have a 3.95 incoming which is trade coming from adjacent nodes from the north sea from the lubeck node the rhineland champagne node all of them are filtering in the english channel or better yet the rhineland is filtering into champagne and then afterwards a portion of that is filtering into the english channel we also have some more nodes coming in from the new world which in the early part of the campaign is not going to make much of a difference however as you progress the new world trade is actually going to be the highest amount of income or one of the highest amounts of income you're going to be getting non-end trade nodes are nodes such as saxony over here which has 5.21 local production 0.99 incoming from other nodes but it also has outgoing flow of trade of 1.24 that means 1.24 of the amount of value within the saxony node is filtered down the line one of these is going into the Lubeck node, the other one is going into the Rhineland node. It is, however, possible to make non end trade nodes into end trade nodes as long as you control 100% of the trade power in that particular node. So, to give an example, this is my Venetian into Roman Empire run, and I've got 100% of, say, the Valencia node, which is why I'm transferring every single bit of the money within Valencia to the Genoese node, which is my primary uh, end node here from where I'm collecting three. 3,900 ducats every month. However, because I do have 100% of the node here, if I wanted to, I could collect instead of uh, transfer trade in uh, Valencia. And what happens as consequence is none of the money is flowing out of the Valencia node. Every single little bit of it is remaining here. Trade value, in essence, is the amount or percentage of a trade node that you have. There's different ways of getting more trade value. The easiest way is to assign trade ships if you have an admiral in that particular fleet with high maneuver it actually gets a little bit of a bonus to the trade power that you get different naval doctrines also increase the ship trade power that you gain from your fleets assigned within those trade nodes you also can get the merchant trade power and provincial trade power from certain privileges obviously owning more provinces within a node will give you more trade power as well and having higher mercantilism is also going to give you more trade power because we've got 100 mercantilism here we've got a provincial trade power modifier of 200 percent trade centers also increase your trade power by flat amounts so here for example barcelona gives me 174 trade power because of the 538 percent trade power efficiency that we have as the roman empire if i wanted to min max i could also do this and that's going to give me even more trade power every single time i click the expand infrastructure and i could also assign protect trade edict which is going to give me another 50 percent trade power modifier now let's go back to transferring into genoa because we're actually losing a lot of money by not transferring our node into the genoese node why is that well because of the scaling effect having all the new world trade filter into genoa means we actually make more money in the genoese node than we would from just having a bottleneck over in uh, venice or better yet uh, valencia so can you have trade power in nodes in which you do not have any provinces 
provinces? Yes. For example, we have no provinces within the Krakow node. However, we've got 14% of that node, which is the third highest share of the node. The reason for that is because we've got certain ideas unlocked and other modifiers. For example, the trade ideas itself, as you can imagine, will offer a ton of modifiers that allow us to spread our trade wings in nodes in which we don't even have any provinces. And in case you were wondering, yes, you could also just send your ships in a node which is a C node and get trade power that way as well. That's why we've got 200 ships in the uh, Gujarati node and that's giving us roughly 100 ducats from 59 trade power just from those ships alone. We don't actually have any provinces ourselves within the Sin node or the Gujarat node better yet. So now that we know what trade power is, what is trade value? Well, if we hover over Genoa, we're going to see quickly that we have a local trade value of 68.82 ducats as well as an incoming trade value of 1,663, which is pretty significant. Now, the 68.83 local means that is the amount of production development turned into actual goods within the Genoese provinces. So say, for example, I click on the province of Florence over here. I go to trade value. I've got a 33.24 trade value. That is because we have 13 production development, which translates into two, two, five, something like that trade goods. Five production development means one trade good. So that means one piece of wine. 10 development means two pieces of wine. 13 means, I don't know, two point something. Okay, I'm not great with mathematics. That being said, the trade value depends on what type of good it is. The price of wine currently stands at 4.12. And that is because of the growth of international wine trade event and the Italian monopolized wine market. Otherwise, it would stand at 2.50 ducats. That being said, we are producing eight pieces of wine. So how is that possible with 13 development? Well, that's because we have a lot of modifiers here. So if we hover over this, every single furnace in our country grants us a global 5% goods produced modifier. Because of all these furnaces, we're getting a lot of extra goods all over the empire. We also have many factories, three subjects, golden era. We're the production leader of this good. Essentially, we are getting 210% goods produced efficiency. So the 2.6 base goods becomes 8.06 when we multiply it by 210% and then the trade value of Genoa is essentially the added amount of all these provinces with whatever goods they might be producing. So let me uh, do a little bit of a test here. Say I'm going to be developing uh, the province of Florence a few times for production development just to explain how this works. That means it's now up to 12.40 goods produced and it ends up being 51 trade value. So after one month has passed and the trade screen has refreshed, we went from 68 local production value to 70 local production value from just getting a couple of dev clicks in uh, Florence itself. Next up, let's talk about trade companies. Now, as you can tell here, we've got quite a few trade companies ourselves. Some of them are giving us a merchant. Some of them are not giving us a merchant. What factors into giving us a merchant is basically whether we have or not 51% of the trade power in that particular node in which that particular trade company belongs to. So for example, we've made all of the Tunisian provinces a part of the Tunisian trade node by clicking this button. You can add all the provinces within that node to your trade company or you can manually do it a click over here for every single individual province. There you go. For example, in Zanzibar, we can click here and add whatever provinces have not yet been added to the trade node. Same goes for the Cape of Good Hope. We can click here and add all the other provinces that were not previously a part of this particular trade company to the trade company. So what what do trade companies do? Well, whenever you add provinces to your trade companies, there's two bonuses. First off, you can build specific trade company buildings such as the company garrison that offers defensiveness and supply limit modifier, the company depot which offers flat local trade power and production efficiency for the entire area, tax modifier from the Roman district and development cost reduction, goods produced flat for the area as well as local production efficiency plus 50% and even you can get some manpower and sailors. Afterwards, you can also build one of the third upgraded building here. We can also use the macro builder and we can see better what these buildings look like. Take note, the third upgrade, you can only have one of these per trade region. So for example, we could have the trade steering plus 50% in this particular region and we cannot build any of the other ones anymore. And in 
general, I pretty much only build the trade steering building because 50% trade steering in that same region is massive. You could also get army tradition, which is not bad on trade value, naval force limit, flat plus five, land force limit, or manpower and sailor increase, as well as minimum local autonomy reduction. But the trade steering is really where it's at because trade steering basically means you're going to be able to transfer more trade from that particular area downstream into eventually your main trade node where you're going to be making the big buck now because for example in ethiopia our trade company has 89 percent of the value we're also getting a merchant and you obviously want to be aiming to get at least 51 percent of the trade value for your trade companies in every single node in which you have a presence because getting that extra merchant allows you to filter more trade into your main nodes so now let's talk a little bit about merchants there's a few other ways to get merchants obviously aside from trade companies you also get one merchant for every new world colony that has at least 10 provinces as well as you get merchants from trade ideas sometimes from national ideas from certain policies you get merchants and from certain missions for different countries as well as from government reforms can offer you merchants if you have a parliament you can go for a merchant from the diets that will appear as long as you convince all your cities or your seats to approve the charter then you will be able to get usually not just a merchant but also trade power abroad and trade range trade range is pretty self-explanatory it basically is the range at which you're able to use your traders at and in general the more merchants you have the easier it is to funnel the world trade into the spots in which you want to be collecting it so if i had an extra merchant i could be transferring from the chesapeake bay despite having 30 percent of the trade value in chesapeake i'm not using that value so the 30 percent that i have here is currently just wasted because i do not have a merchant to transfer forward said 30% into my English channel or whatever else I want to be transferring it to. One more thing to note about trade notes themselves is that you have special interactions whenever you've got certain uh, trade power within those nodes. By default, you will get the trade node power plus 5%. However, you could also set it to hostile trade, which allows you to get spy network construction increased by 25%. You also can get siege ability and artillery levels available versus fort plus one, improve relations plus 15 or if you're a muslim nation you can also propagate religion so that way every province that is within this node is going to slowly start getting converted to your religion with the propagate religion uh, interaction take note any of these affect only the provinces within this particular node and the nations within these particular nodes in which this policy is set to now at the start of the campaign the value within the trade nodes and the trade power within the trade nodes for, for various countries is going to be completely different from whatever happens as you progress in the campaign itself as you can see we only have 13.9 ducats in genoa at the very start instead of a thousand eight hundred or whatever we had in the roman save that is because there's only nine locally produced trade value and another four incoming from the other nodes into uh, genoa there's certain nodes in general that will outperform other nodes and that's based off of the provinces that belong to said nodes as well as how many in coming and outgoing trade wins there are for example leaving the end trade nodes aside which are obviously a special case when it comes to non-end trade nodes or virginicums there is for example constantinople which has a pretty high trade value and it only has one outgoing trade wind whilst having three incoming trade wings from aleppo alexandria and another one from crimea that means it's fairly easy for whoever owns the uh, constantinople trade node to hold most of the node power and the incoming power within the node and prevent it from going afterwards into the Ragusa node and filtering into the rest of Europe if they want to. The Persia trade node is also a really significant one because it is essentially a bottleneck node. Roughly half of the Asian nodes eventually filter down within the Persian node. It does have two outgoing trade winds, one of them into Astrakhan and another one into Aleppo itself. But it it is fairly easy to get a hold of most of the provinces here and then just starve out the Europeans and get filthy rich from all that silk incoming from the Asian bits, right? In the northern parts of Europe, Lubeck is also a fan favorite with only one outgoing trade wind whilst having four incoming trade winds from Rhineland, Saxony, the North Sea, which is the one connecting from the North American continent. So whatever colonial powers might be bringing into here in the late part of the campaign, if you have enough ships in the North North Sea node, 
you might be able to get most of that trade to Lubeck despite having zero colonies of yourself. So you could, for example, let the English colonize the New World and do all the heavy lifting. And then once they start transferring the trade into the North Sea, you hijack that trade and make it come your way into Lubeck rather than going south into the English Channel. Another really great node is the Novgorod node, very similar to Lubeck. And in the Asian parts, the Nippon node, which is essentially the Japanese node, not only does it have quite a few local income, but it has potentially incoming New World income from colonies on the west coast of uh, the North American continent, as well as from the uh, Polynesian Triangle node, which is where some of the North American and South American income is arriving from. And it's actually surprisingly easy to get a massive foothold in this particular node as any of the Asian colonial powers. The richest node at the start of the campaign, however, is the Malacca node. It has 9.64 local, but it also has 7.49 incoming from adjacent nodes. It has, in fact, four incoming nodes and two outgoing ones. And the incoming ones are both from the mainland Chinese and Siam areas, as well as from the islands and the Malaccas here and the Philippines, rich in the spice and the cloves and everything else. So suffice to say, you could get filthy rich if you do decide to colonize or enlighten the natives in these areas and then filter all of this into Europe or on the opposite spectrum. Keep it all for yourself if you're playing in this area and prevent it outflowing into the south parts of uh, South Africa, which afterwards filters down the line into Europe. We also have some extremely bad nodes on the opposite spectrum, such as the Patagonia node, which has only two outgoing nodes. So there's no other nodes filtering into this one. Everything that's being produced here is leaving this area as soon as it's being produced, unless there's some sort of a local entity which will allow it to stay in this particular region. It also, as you can tell, has close to no actual local production right now, since most provinces are not colonized, with the one exception here of uh, the Mapuches. Now let's try and answer what is best. Should you collect in every node or should you transfer in every node? Well, that is actually depending on a few factors. First off, in general, it's better to have one main node in which you're collecting and then just transferring from adjacent nodes to that node. However, that also depends on certain modifiers that affect your country. So for example, as the Timurids over here, we're going to need to wait for one month to refresh the values actually. We're getting 17 in our main node of uh, Persia, which is not really that much trade value. And we got 21% trade value in Samarkand as well as 15% trade value in Lahore from which we are transferring into the Persian node. However, despite having so much trade value in both of these nodes, the reality is that we're not really getting that money once it reaches Persia because most of the trade value in Persia is divided amongst all the small little entities here. So we're getting basically nothing out of it. We could say, for example, increase our trade power in the Persian node by assigning the protect trade edicts in our provinces. We can also get some more trade power from this particular uh, privilege. And then we end up with 19% trade value in Persia, which essentially just means 2.95 ducats, which is not really much. So let's say we start collecting in every single node. Well, what happens then is we get basically peanuts from these nodes. We're getting 3% trade power and 2% trade power in Lahore and uh, Samarkand respectively. Now why is that? Where did the 20% go? Well, that's where the tricky part comes in because the trade value that you have when you're collecting and when you're transferring can be different based on certain parameters such as your caravan power. Now your caravan power is shown if you go to your trade screen as the inland bonus. Essentially, if let's say you have 1000 developed, then a third of your development is going to be your caravan power and that gets multiplied on different other uh, bonuses you might have so for example here we have 143 de development which means we've got 56.79 trade power as a base and then we get a 20 percent bonus from the bam citadel in the province of bam which offers us caravan power plus 20 percent and an extra merchant so that's why if we are transferring you only get said caravan power when you're transferring remember that caravan power power affects the inland nodes whilst uh, your uh, ship trade power affects obviously the shipping lanes and the naval nodes or whatever you might want to call them. So switching back to transfer we get 22% and 16% again. However, let me actually go back to collect and I'll show you guys a little bit of a trick. We're going to go down from 3.28 to 3.12 because we switched to collecting in every single one of our nodes. 
However, if we go to our vassals and we ask them to divert trade towards us, that's going to significantly increase our trade power in all of these nodes. We're not able to do so with Transoxiana because they're not uh, very loyal, but we can do with the other ones for now. And we can also get other nations to transfer their trade willingly, like Ladakh is going to give us 10% of their trade without us having to do anything for it. So then our trade power is going to boost up to nothing. Okay, apparently these nations didn't have much trade power in, uh, in these nodes. Oh no, they did. From 4% to 29% in Hormuz. That is an actual big deal. So we went up to 4.91 ducats from asking for trade power. So now let's do this again, transfer trade, because like I said, the best way to handle this is to just trial and error. Check if it's better when you uh, collect or if it's better when you transfer. And now from transferring once more, we went up to 6.14 ducats because we're getting more value in the Persian node and our value in the Persian node has increased to 25% since Khorasan, one of our subjects, is transferring trade power. So the bottom line is that every single situation is unique. You're really just going to have to experiment when it comes down to it. There's no one rule that applies all over the place. And another very important aspect, like I said earlier, is the nation you're playing as. So the Timurids have a lot of caravan power because they're a big nation. However, if you're playing as a smaller nation like Lubeck, for example, you're not going to have too much caravan power. In fact, Lubeck's caravan power is a measly 5.66 because they only have 17 development as it stands. So inland routes, they've got basically no say in. Lubeck is making a sizable amount of money from just trade alone. 4.14 ducats only from trade. Why is that? Well, Lubeck's got a decent amount of trade efficiency from the fact that it gets bonuses from being an entrepreneur, namely our syndic. We also have 20% trade efficiency from uh, having loyal burgers with high influence. And we've got a sizable trade steering ability as uh, the Hanseatic League because of the traditions of the Hansa, which is our national ideas, naval tradition themselves, and also from being a trade league leader. Since everybody knows, Lubeck starts as the leader of the Hanseatic trade league that includes Bremen, Hamburg, Riga, apparently Gotland as well. We end up having 22% of the trade power within the Lubeck node and our merchants and other adjacent nodes are actually filtering in quite a decent amount of uh, trade. Since we are tagged in as Lubeck, I guess we should talk about the best trading nations. Obviously amongst them, Lubeck is one since it starts with trade steering, trade range as its uh, two traditions and you can get trade efficiency as your ambition. You've got trade, global trade power, merchant plus one, provincial trade power plus 20% and of course it is situated in one of the best nodes in the world, the Lubeck node and has the ability because of its trade league to stay small yet encompass majority of the trade in this area. Alongside the mission that it actually got a few patches ago, it really is an absolute no-brainer in the top 10 in my opinion trade nations. The English also are a massive contender. Of course it depends on the play style that you have but whatever the case you will likely have the majority of the English channel node because of the just sheer amount of provinces that you've got within that particular node and you have access to the new world eventually which means you'll be able to filter in all that juicy nodes into your English channel node and get filthy rich in the process. Holland and in general the uh, Dutch nations within the lowlands are probably better than England. In fact they are 100% better than England. With just the lowland provinces as Holland you can get a higher percentage of the trade node despite not having majority of the provinces themselves since the Dutch get actual trade ideas and bonuses that help them out with it. The English don't get as many as uh, the Dutch do. The English start with really high mercantilism which helps them out early on but unless you have actual flavor towards playing as a trade nation you're going to be cut out in the future and the Dutch are not going to be cut out in the future that's for sure. For example in my recent Dutch or better yet Holland into Netherlands campaign we've got 78% of the English channel node and we're getting 62 ducats from that alone which translates into 100 total income for us 109 in 1509 with just the low country provinces. We don't have a majority of the English channel since that's on the English mainland and in Normandy we only have these lands and despite that we're getting more than half more than three quarters really of this particular node plus the Dutch also have their unique Dutch East India man or VOC India man chap that offers 20% ship trade power modifier as well which you can mix in with the Dutch trade fleets that offer another 25% ship trade power alongside some colonial range the Venetians that I showed earlier in my Roman Empire campaign are 
even more insane than the Dutch. So definitely, in my opinion, the Venetians and the Dutch are the greatest trade nations in the current and final patch for EU4. Highly recommend you check them out. I have a link to both of them in the description below if you like to see uh, the, some starting moves for them. If you enjoyed this and you want to see the Estates Guide up next, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe for the eternal glory of the Roman Empire. Massive thank you to all of my patrons and channel members as well. I really wouldn't be able to do this without all your support. If anybody else wants to join, you will have a link in description.